Step 1. The Origins of Life. Now, Tristan, you're talking to me about starting on a very basic uh, level of understanding human life and where it mm. uh, where it comes from uh, and that's this is a a good base to uh, where you spring further in the program is that correct mm -hmm. yeah most definitely you know there have been many many uh, approaches to life and the origins thereof there's L. Ron Hubbard who has Dianetics, there's the Bible, there's the Quran, there's so many so many origin of the species, it's it's everywhere. Everyone is is thinking about this. But you know, when it comes to the origins of life, I really feel that no one can sum it up better in any way than the of course late Thomas Edward Lawrence or Edwards Lawrence. I th I can't remember if it's a plural Edward. Uh, or just a singular, but in any case, this is the man who has given us so much. And if you don't know him, what what are you doing with your life? But but in any case, uh, in his book, the Seven Pillars of Wisdom, he says, uh, this is uh, for those of you who are following along in the book. It is page four twenty three. And it's the first paragraph. Of course, there's one that ends right before this first paragraph. So technically, it's the first paragraph on the page uh, after one ends. And it's one sentence, and it's five words. And this sums up life just perfectly. It says, instantly, all was complete confusion. End quote. How profound. Profound. You know, and the man, the man was was a World War One vet, and you know he didn't he didn't know World War One as as we know it, which is trenches and everything. He was fighting the Turks, the Ottoman Turks, and you know everything is confusion in life. You know we're all confused. We don't know where we're going, what we're doing. Um, sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing standing in a Starbucks in line. I know I want coffee, but is that what I really want? Do I want more than just coffee? And it, nobody can answer these questions. It, it's like a leaf on a tree. And a leaf on a tree is not really aware of itself because it's part of a, a bigger organism. And it, it sits there, it sits there likely from spring till summer. Of course, I don't really know the lifespan of leaves. But, but, the, but the, the point is, the point is that eventually the lysosomes, which are the garbage factory of the cell, just consume everything else and it withers and dies and that's why you get that beautiful orange or yellow red color is because it's just eating itself and falling off the tree because the tree has signaled it is time it is time for you to go hmm. I love fall I love the fall season yeah same here you know and and my favorite thing about fall and and this maybe some of you aren't familiar with this tradition of fall, but you you uh, go out to a farm field, and uh, or perhaps a grocery store, and it, it's really interesting tradition. You buy something called a pumpkin, and mm. yet. Yeah, and it's it's really interesting. It has this very large stem. Oh, it, and it's kind of, large and orange. Yeah, and it has kind of ripples uh, it, along the sides. Exactly, it looks like a a balloon that's been constricted by by strings yes. wrapping around yes. it over and over. Yes. Yeah, as if you had blown into a ball made of string bars, perhaps that that all converge at either pole, and and then one of them, of course, has that that big huge stalk extending out of it it's almost like a handle and and that handle is wonderful because you just carve around that handle and all of a sudden you can look into the innards and take it out and uh, an interesting thing about about this tradition is that you are ending the life of a plant of a plant and you don't think of it as a sentient being but it, in some way everything does kind of have a consciousness. There is a sense of awareness in nearly everything. This goes back to Eastern philosophy and and all that good stuff. That that something, if it is composed of matter, somehow has awareness. And to think of the pumpkin, to think of the pumpkin sitting in the grocery store. Um, I don't think it has a sense of pride. I don't think 
it uh, all of a sudden becomes jealous of the other pumpkins that are being picked before before itself, you know. But but in any case, it eventually will be picked. Of course, if it's not half rotten and it gets tossed out in the dumpster and behind the Rainbow Foods or Cub or or Mount Royal, wherever you purchase this pumpkin, uh, but the top is sliced off and then the innards take it out. What what kind of pain would that be for the pumpkin if it could feel pain? Now, we don't know if it feels pain. We, we don't know this, perhaps. It's like the leaf on the tree. Does the leaf feel pain of the lysosomes, you know, just devouring everything in the cell because of a genetic trigger um, or a chemical trigger, perhaps, that uh, says, hey, lysosomes, it's time to sweep up and just just end this this leap you know it's very interesting it's interesting that you use the pumpkin metaphor mm -hmm. um i think because with you, those of you who are familiar with the tradition of halloween um mm -hmm. and i won't go into too much uh, elaborate explanation um, of the holiday if you care to look it up for yourself if you've I, purchased this in a different country. Yeah. Uh, I'm vaguely familiar with it. Vaguely. But yes. I've heard of it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you look it up for yourself so you will understand the um, the importance of this metaphor is that you uh, we talked about carving out the top of the pumpkin and taking mm -hmm. off the and, and scooping out the innards mm -hmm. um, uh, but then we carve a face onto it and we put a light inside and then we have it out at night, and, and the light shines out of it. And I think, really, if, if we were to go into a deep metaphorical mm -hmm. um, sense of this program, it would be like this program instilling this light in you as a person. Exactly, exactly. It's, yes. And it, it, even when the pumpkin is a, a shell of its former, former self, it really, it re it's the ghost, the ghost of the pumpkin that's coming out through the eyes and mouth, perhaps nose, or if you turn it into a Death Star, or something. There, there's pictures online of it. It's a yes. very, very interesting ritual. Mm. Uh, you can carve anything out of a pumpkin, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, anything, really. That uh, was my favorite show as a child. Really? Good. Yes. That, that's a, a good show. Profound, because, you know, you have this uh, sensei, essentially, who's a rat, mm -hmm. who teaches yes. these turtles to overcome their circumstances. And, and that's really what this program is, is, uh, is driving at, is overcoming your circumstances, finding the light in the pumpkin, letting the light come out of the pumpkin, go into your eyes, have your eyes send messages to the brain, the brain going, okay, I see this light, and what does it mean? And a back and forth between the eyes, the light, and the pumpkin, and you coming to fully, fully understand who you are. Very good.